Hello, everyone. Welcome. We're going to wait a few minutes just to get started. Thanks for listening in, though. Josh, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. We will introduce Josh more here in a bit. Now, where are you at, Josh, today? Today, I'm in Lake Oswego. Lake Oswego, Oregon. Nice. Yep. I'm in Eugene, Oregon. We had uh, thunder and lightning last night, and one of my buddies sent me a picture of the hail that came down. No joke, size of a golf ball. It was, I've never seen anything nice. like it. Yeah, it was wild. <laughs> Destroy your car. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and get started. So hello, everyone. Thanks for being here. Welcome to our August webinar. So today we're going to talk about the markets. It's been quite the year for the markets. So we're going to do a little analysis, give, give some information and outlook, give you some reasons to be confident in this market. Yes, there are quite a few reasons, a lot of good stuff that has come out actually recently, including today. So uh, we'll, we'll go over that and we'll also revisit our investment strategy and how we should approach investing during these volatile times. So we are Financial Freedom Wealth Management Group. For those of you who don't know us, we were founded in 2001 in Newport, Oregon, over on the coast. We're a comprehensive wealth management and planning firm committed to helping our clients improve their long-term success and pursue financial freedom. So we serve a whole bunch of different people, retirees, business owners, people going through transitions. We help people who are just getting started with retirement planning. Basically, if you need help with your finances, we're here for you. We wanna take some of that pressure off so that you can enjoy your life. And our commitment is to care deeply about you and your financial life. You know, it's more than just investments. That is a big piece of what we do, but we're here to care about you uh, and your families. So this is our team, at least some of our team. We have four others that are not pictured here that are uh, newer to the team, but the main thing is that we are a group. We are a team here to, to delight our clients. You know, we're not individuals, you know, where you only get one or two of us. It's really a whole group effort. Uh, if you're a client of ours, you're likely going to interact with a whole bunch of us and just know that we're all here for you, all available uh, for all of our clients. So my name is DJ Wright. I'm our investment manager and wealth advisor. I've been here for seven years. I live in Eugene, Oregon. I'm a big duck fan. Go Ducks. Always got to say that. And uh, let's see, I, I've had a big year. I got married this year and I have a, a new baby coming next month. I love what I do here. I love helping people plan for their futures. And it's a, it's a great job. I am joined by Josh Weaver today. So Josh works for a company called First Trust. They're one of our partners. He's been there for nine years. Let's see, Josh, you you were at Google before you joined First Trust. That's pretty neat. And you, uh, let's see, graduated from Wheaton College and played baseball. So you're a baseball guy, huh? What position did you play? Pitcher and outfield. Pitcher and outfield. Good. So I'm a, I'm a track and field guy. I live in Eugene's Tracktown, USA. We had the world championships recently, which was pretty neat. So, well, Josh, thanks for being here. Uh, glad to have you. Yeah, thank you for having me. So why should we be bullish? It's been a crazy year. What's going on? Why should we feel good about things? Yeah, so uh, with that, I will um, make the note that I am the uh, career and single season hit by pitch record holder uh, <laughs> at Wheaton College. So um, often my intelligence is questioned, uh, rightfully so. Because who would stand in front of a baseball at 88 miles an hour? But uh, my name is Josh Weaver, as, as DJ alluded to. I've been at First Trust for nine years. I'm from Chicago, Illinois. I lived there my whole life. And about four years ago, I moved to Boise, Idaho. So uh, located in Boise, Idaho now. And 
first, I just want to tell you about, you know, hopefully you've heard of First Trust. Uh, if you hadn't, have not heard of First Trust, uh, the reason may be is that we don't do any advertising or commercials or billboards or anything like that. And the reason why that is, is we want to team with teams like Financial Freedom who are there to console clients through emotional times. And so the markets can be quite emotional. People can make rash decisions. And we want to team with advisors who are there to, you know, guard you through your emotional experience and make sure that you're on the right track. So that's why we team with advisors. Um, as I mentioned, I'm from Chicago originally. I like to tell a story about how I got to Boise as an example of, of why we think it's important to have those you know, emotional counselors in, in these volatile times. So when I first started this role, uh, me and my wife decided um, that I was gonna take it. And I started working October 1st of 2016. And my first daughter or my first child was born October 21st of 2016. So I started this role three weeks before my daughter was born. I commuted from Chicago to Boise and Oregon every single week. And every week I got on a plane on a Monday, uh, flew back on a Friday, uh, basically recovered from jet lag on Saturday, you know, was a, was a human being uh, for about 12 hours on Sunday and then had to repack my bags and, and fly out the next day. So we decided if this ever negatively impacted my daughter uh, and her emotional state, uh, I was gonna have to move to, to Oregon or, uh, or to Boise. And so one day I came home, my daughter was about a year and a half old, came home from a trip and she comes running up to me and she said, daddy, daddy, I missed you so much and gave me a giant hug. And I was like, okay, she knows I'm gone. My wife and I laid in bed that night, we looked at, Zillow listings. We started contacting some realtors, figuring out where we were going to live. Um, and we decided we're going to look at Boise and um, we emotionally committed to, to making that decision. The next day, uh, over, the, over the course of the night, my daughter had made her way into our bed. Uh, she had you know, some sort of a dream or whatever, woke up, came into our bedroom. We wake up in the morning and our dog walked by the threshold to our room and my daughter sprinted out and said, Winnie, Winnie, I missed you so much and gave our dog a big hug. And our dog has never once traveled with me. Uh, my daughter spent every waking moment with our dog. And yet she said that she missed our dog. And that was when I realized I let my emotions get the best of me. My daughter said one thing to me and we had committed to moving 2000 miles uh, across the country. And so investing can be the same way. It becomes extremely volatile. Uh, in March of 2020, we kept hearing things were never going to get back to normal. Uh, the world was going to end as we know it. And yet things did get back to normal. And if you had not stayed the course, if you hadn't worked with someone who was gu guiding you through that process and telling you to you know, stay with the plan, things are going to be okay eventually. We just got to stay with the plan. And you sold out of everything. You missed out on a really big move the rest of 2020 and 2021. And so our emotions, uh, although they're good things, they make us what we are, can definitely hurt us when we're making some of these decisions. So um, with that being said, that's why we work with teams. Uh, and I just want to give a quick market update, uh, some positive things going on in the, in the economy, because we kept hearing hearing about bad things pretty frequently. So uh, with that, uh, we are still uh, fairly bullish as a company. Uh, we think that things will continue to be volatile, but we just got to stay the course uh, and, and things will turn out okay. So our chief economist's name is Brian Westbury. Um, he's been with the firm for, for a number of years. In 2001, he won Economist of the Year from the Wall Street Journal, uh, but he has what he calls his five pillars to prosperity. So I'll go into the five pillars and then we can go into some of the data points in the slides. But his five pillars to prosperity, the first one is monetary policy. So what he's referring to with monetary policy uh, essentially can be uh, whittled down to interest rates. And so a lot has been made about interest rates this year. Uh, a 30-year fixed mortgage has gone from like three and a half to, I think it topped out at about six and a half. Now it's down at five and a half. Um, but there are probably people on this WebEx who remember when the 30-year fixed mortgage rate was 10 to 16%. And so even though rates have gone up significantly, they're still pretty cheap from where things have been historically. And so we would consider monetary policy or where rates are uh, to be a green pillar at this point in time. They're definitely gone up from where they were, but where rates are is not hurting business at this point in time. 
The second one is tax policy. Um, we thought the taxes may go up. Uh, we kept hearing in the news that taxes were going to go up. There's going to be a new tax plan. Um, and they are going to go up a little bit, but the amount that they're going up shouldn't be detrimental uh, to where it's going to hurt business. Businesses are going to have to change a little bit, but businesses are still going to be profitable. Um, you know, there hasn't come out with like a 50% corporate tax rate or, or anything that's completely crazy. And so uh, we're not worried about where corporate taxes are at this point or, or personal tax rates. Uh, we don't think it's going to be detrimental to business. And so we consider that to be a green pillar. So those are our two green pillars. Our neutral or a yellow pillar is trade policy. There are still a number of tariffs. Uh, we're in favor of free trade. Uh, there are still a number of tariffs out there on, on other countries. And so that's limiting some of the trade that we can do. Um, but it's still not you know, completely hindering it to where we would consider it a red pillar. Now, the two red pillars for us are spending and regulation. So that's government spending and government regulation. Um, I'm sure that you have heard about inflation at some point over the last six months, 12 months. Um, a lot of inflation can be uh, attributed to government spending and stimulus packages. And so we're not saying, you know, obviously COVID was a rough time. People got put out of work. Um, but in August of 2020, unemployment had gone back to 5.6-ish percent, somewhere in that range, uh, which is more or less full employment. We weren't back to the lows of before COVID at 3.7, uh, but 5.6% means most people are employed that are looking for work. And yet at that point, we kicked out another trillion dollar stimulus package. And we did, we did many more after that. And so um, we think we, are, we can't continue to do that. Some people should have been assisted. Uh, we should have had some stimulus. But um, if you've heard the term helicopter money, just continuing to pass helicopter money, stimulus after stimulus, um, we have to pay for that at some point. And so we think that the government spends too much. We would prefer a smaller government. Um, so that's why we were, we're considering that red. And then the other one is regulation. Uh, we think that there is too much regulation in the government as it currently stands. There needs to be some regulation. We can't have just you know, complete anarchy and no government. Uh, but we think that there are many areas of the government that are over-regulated at this point. Uh, so we would consider that to be a red pillar. Uh, but with that being said, we have two green pillars, one yellow and two red. If you compare that to 2008, uh, the last huge crisis that we had, uh, all five of those pillars were in the red. And so because we still have two green ones, um, we're still quite bullish or moderately bullish um, heading into the rest of the year. So with that being said, I do have some, some charts that I'd just like to point out that show things are getting better. Um, so if you can go, there we go. So um, you'll notice initial jobless claims uh, in 2020, there is that COVID spike where we had 6 million uh, initial jobless claims right out of the gate. Obviously, things got better over the course of the year. Um, you'll also notice that dark blue line is 2021. At the start of 2021, we still had, you know, I'm going to just kind of ballpark it at half a million jobless claims there, and it tapered off over the course of the year. This year, we're basically right on that, that bottom line. So right where 2019 was for the entire year. And so that tells us that jobs are getting back to normal. People that are looking for work are, are getting work and they're keeping it. And there haven't been mass layoffs um, like there were in 2020, um, basically throughout the year. But we're, we're in a much better position than we were in 2020. We're in a much better position than we were in 2021. On top of that, if you look at continuing jobless claims, again, this orange line is 2020. We see that taper off uh, into the end of the year. We see that continue into 2021 and it tapers off. And then this year, again, it's right back where we were to 2019. So uh, in our opinion, this is a sign of a very, very strong labor market and, and you know, a positive within the economy. Uh, you can also look at weekly retail sales Again, 2020 was a complete anomaly, right? We had a, we had a government shutdown. Uh, people couldn't go to work. Stores weren't open. Um, and so we had this, this massive dip. You would expect us to have grown in 2021, which if you look at this, this is year over year percentage change. So we did grow in 2021, which you would expect because we were coming out of those, that lockdown. 
But if you look at 2022, we've also grown again year over year. So um, this is the important year for us because you should expect all the numbers to have been up in 2021 because we're going from shutdown and, and reopening to fully reopen. So theoretically things should be up, but because we've had continued growth, that shows that we are continuing to expand um, out of a good market that we had in, in 2021. So if you can go to the, the next slide, um, we think that there's gonna be, uh, basically in 2020, you had a recovery of the consumer. We continue to consume products and goods. So a lot of people went out and bought new TVs and they bought laptops and they bought you know, technology for Zoom calls and, and things of that nature. And now we've this year, the end of last year, and then this year, uh, we've had the continuation of more of the service industry. And so uh, again, same timeframes with the line colors, but uh, 2020 for open table, which is just restaurant reservations that we saw, 2020 you had that stark steep decline. Uh, 2021, you saw a little bit of recovery. This year we're seeing more of a recovery. You see that in the TSA checkpoint data as well as the global flights. Um, so things are getting back to normal. And in fact, because everyone didn't travel uh, for a year, people are going overboard on their travel. And so that's where we think more of the spending is going to occur is more in the uh, travel and experience side of things because everyone bought new TVs. They bought new laptops. Uh, you don't need a brand new one a year later. They're going to go spend on the experiences. Um, so that's part of the reason why we think things are getting better. And then if you could go to that, that next slide, um, here's another, uh, you know, just important things. These are employees on non-farm non payrolls. Um, so again, you saw steady growth for about 20 years. Uh, you had a dip during 2008. You had a smaller dip, you know, during the tech wreck. Um, you had a dip in 2008 during the financial crisis. You saw continued steady growth, uh, up until 2020. And then we lost 22.4 million jobs. Um, from May 20 to December of 2021, we recovered uh, about 19 million of that 22 million jobs. Uh, this year, we've actually, I believe we've fully recovered uh, all of the job losses that we experienced um, during the COVID shutdown of March of 2020. So things are getting back to normal. You're seeing it. Most restaurants are fully open. Um, and we're confident that the consumer is going to continue to consume things uh, for the foreseeable future. And I think there's one more slide. If I stand, I might stand corrected. That's no, what we have for that. Me. Yeah. Cool. I want so, um, so we're still quite bullish. Uh, we think things are, are still pretty healthy. And with that, I'll pass it over to, to DJ. I appreciate your time. Yeah, no, thanks for all that, Josh. And couple other things I wanted to mention was, uh, and these are positives, is, you know, we just had all of our second quarter earnings from all the S&P 500 companies. And it's been really great. Companies are making money. You know, companies, they're resilient, even with higher inflation, they find ways to make money. And so those numbers have been really good. That's part of what, why we've seen a nice bounce off of those June lows that we saw in the stock market. Today, we actually had our inflation numbers come out. And they were lower than what most economists were expecting. So that was another good positive sign. Maybe inflation is peaking and the markets have actually, they've reacted very nicely today to that news. So, you know, we can look at all this data and look at all these graphs and numbers and try to come to various conclusions and that's all great. But, you know, the bottom line is nobody really knows what's going to happen. You know, we can't, we just can't predict these things. You can't predict the stock market. You can't time these things. You know, if you could, you'd be extremely wealthy and, you know, no one can. And so what we, what we know is that over time, the markets do really, really well. They're very resilient. They've been growing for a hundred years. We've faced so many challenges through all those and the markets have continued higher. So it, it is important to, to remember that as we look at you know, what's looking good and bad in the economy. So here we have the S&P 500. So these are your 500 largest U.S. companies. And this is a, what, a 50, 50 year period. So from 1970 through 2022 or up to 2022. The annual return during this whole period 
was 10.88%. So very good. If you invested $10,000 back in 1970 in the S&P 500, it'd be worth more than $2.2 million today. That, I mean, that's incredible. And there's been tons of challenges that we have faced as a nation and as the whole world. We have a lot of them highlighted here on this chart. I mean, let's just go through some of these. You've got, I mean, in the 70s and 80s, high inflation, right? Kind of like what we're seeing today. Uh, we had the dot-com bubble back in 2000. You have had multiple wars during these periods. We've had the Great Recession of 2008. You've got a pandemic in 2020. And still, through all of this, you can see that the market continues higher, uh, growing really, really well. So, you know, it's we can get caught up in what's going on in you know, today, right now, and sometimes fear can take over, but sometimes it's good to step back and, and realize that, you know, things do happen and the markets are very resilient. So this is, this might be one of the greatest graphs about the markets. So volatility is normal and it, it happens and we should expect it. It will continue to happen. And staying the course, Josh mentioned this earlier, is really the best thing you can do. You know, if, if you look at this, so it's year by year since 1980. And the blue bar is the actual calendar year return. So if you stayed invested from January 1 to December 31st, you would have seen all those blue returns. So if you just scroll through these, I mean, they're pretty pretty amazing. Yes, there's some down years, which is expected, but for the most part, really good returns. Now the bluish yellowish bar is the biggest decline that we saw during that year. So some pretty big dips that happen, but, but in the end they recover and the markets do really, really well. You know, every year we should expect three, 5% pullbacks and one 10%, what we call a correction. On average, we see all that every single year. And then every four or five years, on average, we see a bigger dip, like a, a bear market, which is what we've seen this year, where it could be, you know, 20 to 30 percent. So volatility is normal. So just, again, keep that in mind as we go through these periods of volatility. It's not fun. It's hard. We understand that. Uh, but uh, it is part of the investing process. And it is the price that we pay for long-term success in the stock market. So here we can see various uh, asset classes and their performance from right before the Great Recession and then up to 2022. So we've got stocks, you've got gold, you have the 10-year treasury, which these are government bonds, CPI is going to be your inflation rate, you've got home prices, cash, and oil. So stocks won by a landslide. You can see that here. So during this whole period, stocks increased about 300%. Well, the second was gold coming in at about 150. So almost twice as much growth. And what's even more amazing is that stocks went through a 50% decline right off the bat and still recouped all of that and grew by 300%. So the main thing to take away from this is that going through volatility like years that we're seeing, you know, this year, it's not a time to abandon stocks. You know, you still need that for your longer term portfolio to keep your money growing. You know, it can feel like you want to, you know, I, I can't handle these, this volatility and you want to get out of them, but know that over time, they do really, really well. So keep that in mind. Now, if you have money that you're living off of or a shorter timeline, it is important to have more conservative investments. And so we, you know, we would help you figure out how much to have in you know, stocks versus maybe bonds or cash. So this is showing us all the various bull and bear markets. So a bull market is when you know, we're expanding, stock prices are going up. A bear market is when we pull back 20% or more, something that we went through this year. So the average bull market lasts between four and five years. And the total return on average is 155% gain. 
Now, the bear markets on average last less than a year. So 11 months has been the average with an average loss of 32%. So, you know, again, bear markets are tough. It's hard to go through, but know that that next bull market is around the corner, right? You can see that here. And luckily, bear markets are, are they're usually pretty short. It can feel really long, but the, the bulls last much longer than the bears, which is why we've seen such great growth in the stock market. Another interesting thing here is so you can see the recessions. So a recession and a bear market are two different things. The bear market is just about the stocks going down 20%, whereas a recession is a, you know, a widespread economic downturn. And so they don't always go hand in hand. We've seen recessions without bear markets, and we've seen bear markets without recessions. A lot of times they do come together, but not always. So this is the last one I want to talk about. And when we see all this volatility that we've seen this year, it can be very tempting to want to change things, maybe go to cash, right? The thought process is my account's dropping. I want to stop the bleeding. I want to sell all my investments, go to cash. I will get back in once things look better. I mean, it seems like the right, the right thing to do, but in reality, that can really, really hurt you and, and your accounts. So with, this, with the stock market, a lot of times it moves significantly in a handful of days. So you'll have a lot of gains that maybe are in five or 10 days. And you need to be invested in those you know, for those days. And we can't predict or time when they're going to come. So that's why you need to stay the course. So if you had $10,000 that you invested basically the beginning of, of 1980, and you let it sit there until March of 2022, it would grow to 1.26 million. Now, if you missed the five best days, just five days, think about all the trading days during that 40 year period, and you missed only the five best, you would have $780,000. That's a huge difference. And note that a lot of times these big up days come shortly after maybe a big down day. So if you experience that, you know, 4% loss in a day and you said, I can't handle this anymore, you sold then, shortly thereafter, we see a huge up day and you miss it. And then you get back in because you're feeling a little bit better about things. This is what the outcome could be. Of course, 10 days, you missed the best 10 days. Now you're looking at 560,000 and you can see it gets worse from there. So really important to stay the course. You just can't time these things. And uh, over time, the markets do really, really well, averaging 10%, just about 10% per year. So that's what we have for you guys today. Hope you found a couple of good pieces of information. Uh, what do you do next? Well, if you uh, are not a client of ours and you'd like to uh, talk to us, we do offer a complimentary consultation. You can text FREEDOM to 458-777-4458. You can also call any of our, our numbers. We can get you scheduled. If you are a client of ours, you know that we're always available to you anytime you want to talk. So uh, feel free to reach out. So LPL Financial, they are our broker dealer. So they're the ones that actually hold our clients' accounts. And they're the largest independent broker dealer in the country. One of the main reasons why we, we use LPL is that they have no proprietary products. And so they don't have any funds, right? There's no LPL funds. And so that's a big reason why we use them. They have all the SIPC protection uh, that, that your brokers have. Here's the disclosures that we got to show you. Uh, you can read these really quickly. But yeah, if you guys have any questions, feel free to put those in the chat or the, the Q&A. We're happy to answer anything that you have. Anything works. And if you want to, you know, if you want to schedule a meeting and come back and ask a question, that's totally fine. But uh, yeah, Josh, what do you think? You got anything else? No, I am. Uh, I, I just thank you for for having me and and spend the time with me.
yeah, we appreciate all that you do. Um, okay, well, we're going to end it there. Uh, thanks for listening in, and I hope you all have a great rest of your day and a good uh, week. Thank you.